So I think there's already a lot of research interest in the last five or 10 years on seeking treatments for people with more advanced disease, um, by which I mean people who already have established disability. Um, and, you know, a lot of those treatments are um, uh, repurposed. So there's some quite good screening platforms now where um, existing compounds that are used for any other disease can be screened for potential benefit in a laboratory um, in terms of remyelination or um, neuroprotection. Um, so that's enabled compounds, I think, to come to a phase three trial um, or, or phase two or, or phase three trial more quickly. And um, because of that repurposing, it's not a new um, product to the market. So there's a lot of that going on. Um, and um, of course, there are also um, new compounds as well. Um, so investigative medical compounds, um, which are being um, studied in much earlier phases. And then I think, you know, the important thing that I touched upon, but other speakers um, also covered at the meeting is, you know, not forgetting some of the other things to do with brain health. So it's not actually all about the medicines. So, you know, other speakers thought about um, cognition, maintaining cognition and made the point that actually, you know, keeping your patients cognitive, cognitively active, physically active, um, healthy in other ways, such as, you know, reducing smoking and alcohol use and so on. Um, you know, probably things that are slightly overlooked, even maintaining healthy blood pressure um, and healthy body weight and things. So I think that there is also that holistic approach, which almost certainly tries to slow down the biological aging process, which is probably, you know, um, uh, part of the problem when people enter a sort of progressive phase of multiple sclerosis.